Tales of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good evening, this is Ronald Coleman. Benita Coleman. Inviting you to join us again on the campus of Ivy College. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. You know, many a man takes his wife a box of candy or a bunch of flowers on occasion, but the occasion is usually a birthday or an anniversary. It's a rare husband indeed who takes his wife a bunch of violets simply because it's spring and there are flowers for sale on the street corners, and he happens to be fond of her. But that's how it is with Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy, as he enters his own front door at number one faculty row. Vicky, Vicky, where are you? Your chicken has come home to roost. Welcome home, chicken. Put your face down here if you'd like a small hen peck. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, darling. And if I may take this occasion to make cynics of the comic strip artists, the wearier novelists, and domestic relation clinics... Um, I, I would like to state that I, William T. Hall, being of sound mind, uh, even after many years of marriage, do hereby depose and declare that I still love you very much, implementing this declaration with this bunch of violets. Why, Daddy, how lovely. <laughs> they do not quite match your eyes, my dear, but we must be patient with nature. This is her busy season. Yes. <laughs> Would you put all that in writing if I get you about 12 sheets of paper? <laughs> oh, I love violets. Mm. And such a large bunch, too. Uh, well, I was playing safe. I thought they might be the shrinking type. <laughs> <laughs> this is the birthday. I mean, did you bring me violets to celebrate some occasion? Yes. Well, what did I forget? Oh, don't chide yourself, my love. The only occasion I'm celebrating is our marriage. Yeah, but this isn't our wedding anniversary. I know that, but uh, can't I celebrate it whenever I want to, just because I view the matter with pleasure? Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a good day? How did your conference with Mr. Wellman go? Darling, one does not have conferences with Mr. Wellman. (laughs) One listens. Conferring with Clarence is equivalent to discussing balanced diets with a hungry tiger. (laughs) You can't win. Uh, Has anyone called? Yes. A man named Follinsby called and wanted to know when you were going to return his trombone. Follinsby? Trombone? (laughs) Don't worry about it. He had the wrong number. I called after that, and he said there was a tiny moth hole in the elbow of your grey suit, and should he reweave it? So I said, please do. Oh, Toddy, I'm afraid I don't take very good care of you. Moth holes in your suits. It's shameful, really. My dear, dear woman, in the first place, that suit is at least seven years old and should only be worn to riots, dogfights, and balloon ascensions. <laughs> Secondly, I don't expect you to spend your waking hours hiding in closets with a cat pistol, frightening off marauding Lepidoptera. <laughs> Thirdly, you take excellent care of me. Oh, then you don't think our marriage is a failure. Signed, anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Anxious, no, I do not. Signed, Aunt Beatrice. <laughs> now then, I, who else called? Oh, uh, Professor Gardner and Dr. Otis. But well, that is, Dr. Otis called for both of them. She said they'd like to come and see you on a rather serious matter. Oh? I said about four o'clock would be safe. Well, it's almost four now. I wonder what's troubling them. Yeah, let's see. Now, Otis is anthropology, and uh, what is Gardner? Paleontology. Oh, yes, yes. Study of geologic periods based mostly on fossils. And I wonder if they ever studied Mr. Wellman. <laughs> now, Mr. Wellman is a unique specimen, a modern fossil. <laughs> he can take more time. Oh, Louisa, to work out... I imagine that's Professor Gardner and Dr. Otis. Uh, you know them, of course, don't yes, you, Vicky? Exactly. They're very nice. Both ah, of them. they're two of my favorite. Ah, good afternoon, Dr. Otis. Dr. Hall, oh, Professor yeah. Gardner. Nice to see you. I think you've met my wife. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I just thought we, we apologize for breaking in on you like this, Dr. Hall. Oh, no, no, no. Anyway, my husband has a clause in his contract which says the president should be available at all times to the more interesting and attractive members of the faculty. Well, do I understand that something serious is troubling you? Yes, Dr. Hall. 
We've got something on our conscience we'd like to unload and take whatever consequences we deserve. Well, this sounds as though it needs more privacy than you have with me present, so I'll go get my cat pistol and frighten some moths. Oh, no, no, please. <laughs> don't go, Mrs. Hall. The students value your help and advice so much, I don't see why the faculty can't benefit from it, too. Yes, please stay. Well, thank you. Well, now that we have a quorum, which of you is the spokesman for the delegation? Um, uh, you tell them, dear. Uh-oh. Dear? Uh, uh, yes, Mrs. Hall. Uh, we're married. Oh, yes, we, we've been married two weeks. Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. But, but, Dr. Hall, it's against the rules. We have violated the regulations. We're living in what you might call uh, academic sin. <laughs> with no one knowing it, but... <laughs> then we realized we were being unfair and unethical, and it played on our minds, and so we decided to come and tell you. Oh, I appreciate that. And while matrimony as such is approved by most civilized people, in your case, I'm afraid our esteemed Board of Governors will consider it a serious breach of regulations. Will somebody please tell me what's going on here? Who's the Board of Governors to tell people they can't get married? Tell him to go boil a buffalo. Ah, <laughs> oh, Victoria, my love, your righteous indignation is quite natural, and I share it. But, as with most regulations governing the operation of this college, however idiotic they may seem at first glance, the rule against intra-faculty marriages has a realistic basis. Yes, you, you see, Mrs. Hall, it's not that they're against marriage, but they oppose more than one member of a family being on the faculty at the same time. So getting married and keeping it a secret for two weeks is a pretty serious infraction. Oh, uh, well, I think you came to the right place. This is the sort of thing my husband loves to find solutions to. <laughs> he knows more answers than there are questions. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will understand my wife's belief in my omnipotence. Many a man has become a success merely by trying to live up to his reputation, however hollow it might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, your reputation may not be for omnipotence, Dr. Hall, but it certainly isn't hollow. <laughs> As Emerson, I think, said, an institution is the length and shadow of one man. And you cast a pretty respectable shadow, Doctor. Oh, <laughs> Although you. I realize that flattery will get us nowhere in this situation... Well, we're in a bad spot, and we, we thought you ought to know. Now, look, maybe I'm not very bright, but why was such a silly rule as this ever passed? Well, it's a matter of economic status, my love. Each faculty salary is adjusted with surgical precision to the rank of the individual. Hmm. Thus, it is impossible for an instructor to make more than an assistant professor, or an assistant professor to make more than an associate professor, or an associate professor more than a full professor, and so on, ad presidentem. <laughs> Follow me. Well, uh, yes, I, I'm following you, but I'm running like mad to keep up. <laughs> uh, hypothetically, um, le let us say that uh, the two faculty members get married. Uh, meet Mr. and Mrs. Hypothesis. <laughs> As a result of this marriage, the family unit represented by this couple might have an income superior to that of, uh, let us say, the dean of men. With a professionally inferior status and a financially superior one, resentments arise, protocol lies bleeding, and, according to the Board of Governors, Ivy College totters and crumbles into ruins. Well, maybe I'm being just hopeful, Dr. Hall, but you sound as though you don't agree. Oh, I, I believe in laws and regulations, but they are subject to reconsideration. And I've made frequent attempts to remove the one under discussion. Uh, Mrs. Gardner tells me that it's one of Mr. Wellman's favorite rules. Oh, come on now. You've been married over two weeks. You can call her Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Hall. You see, if the rule is enforced against us, John can't very well stay at home while I go on teaching. Even though he loves cooking and can sew on a button as well as the next, I... Well, I don't think Mr. Wellman would like that either. I'm afraid you're right. And if you stayed home, Dr. Otis... Well, I'd be giving up years of work in my field and a book that needs finishing. I don't want to find a job at another school because, well, it may be just a foolish whim, I, but I just don't want to be separated from John or from Ivy. Oh, and Ivy doesn't want to be separated from either of you. Well, we'd like to try to keep it a secret for a while longer, but I don't think we'd succeed. In our present mood, we just want to tell the whole world about it. And when you're in that mood... Marriage, like murder, will out 
Pardon? From all the symptoms, I would say we're witnessing the onset of an acute form of successful marriage. Yes. Now, as old practitioners, we have a duty to perform. Most emphatically. Then will you take on our case, Dr. Hall? Well... Oh, we'd appreciate it very much. Having deceived you for a couple of weeks, we don't come into court with very clean hands, but we have great faith in the judge. Well, I'll do my best to act off the record in the case of Wellman versus Cupid. Oh, thank That's you, Dr. Hall. That's very kind of you, Dr. Hall. Uh, however, I must warn you that never has that young miscreant with a bow and arrow had a more flint-hearted target. But don't give up hope. As Shakespeare almost said, this bud of love by Wellman's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. <laughs> As we return to the halls of Ivy, we find Dr. Hall and his wife, Victoria, at breakfast the next morning. Another piece of toast, Hardy? Um, I, um... Uh... Marmalade on your eggs or just cream and sugar? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Won't you try one of these boiled curriculums? They're matriculated in deep fat and served as chopped umbrella handles. No, no, thank you, dear. I, um, I don't, I don't believe I... Uh, chopped what? <laughs> umbrella handles. They're all out of peanut brittle. Uh, peanut uh, uh, umbrella... Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Vicky. Take me gently by the hand and lead me back to the conversational crossroads where we lost each other. Oh, well, it's all right, darling. It's nice to know you're here physically, even if mentally you're having breakfast somewhere else. I admit to being absent without leave, but it wasn't for breakfast. I was thinking of Professor and Mrs. Gardner. Mm, and what is Ivy's own Beatrice Fairfax going to do about them? I have sent for Mr. Wellman. Oh, it's very saucy, I feel. <laughs> a mere president of a college sending for a chairman of the board of governors. Why, if it's, it's like a used car dealer sending for General Motors. <laughs> well, darling, Mr. Wellman is not, to coin a phrase, unsendable for. After all, he's only the chairman of the board of governors. And, by one definition, a governor is a mechanical attachment for controlling speed. Uh, thus, Mr. Wellman is a device for retarding the advancement of whatever he may be mechanically attached to. <laughs> uh, therefore... <laughs> uh, I seem to be attached to the doorbell right oh, now. Yes. <laughs> Never mind, Mr. Tate. I know my own way in. Uh, Dr. Hall, I received a message that you wish to see me. I'm not in the habit of being summoned, you know. We shall all be summoned one of these days, Mr. Hall. <laughs> Good morning. Will you have a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Good morning. And I shall be ready, Mrs. Hall. Hmm? When I'm summoned, I mean. Oh. <laughs> well, Dr. Hall. Oh, I hope I shall be ready, too, Mr. Hall. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, anyway, it, it must be something very urgent for you to send for me for. Uh, that is, otherwise, why would you? Uh... Well, Mr. Wellman, I wanted to consult you on a rather delicate matter. Well, uh, 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 that's different. Glad to be of help. After all, I am a man of considerable experience, and any time I can... I mean, anything that requires delicate handling is something of which... What have you gotten yourself into now? <laughs> I am only indirectly involved, Mr. Wellman, and perhaps you are also. Me? Involved? <laughs> Nonsense. It's just got it. It was perfectly innocent. I mean, there, there's no basis for, for scandal just because a man... After all, it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> and I only drove her two blocks. <laughs> and good heavens, if a man in my official position can't give the dean of women... I... What is it you're talking about, <laughs> Professor John Gardner and Dr. Otis, Mr. Wellman. Remember them? Well, certainly. Don't you think I know the members of our own faculty? Fine young people. Credit to Ivy. Wish we had more like them. Well, in a year or two, you might get your wish, speaking my own. You'll be pleased to hear that they're married, Mr. Wellman. Why, yes, of course. Like to hear about such things. <laughs> Nothing like marriage to bring people together, I always tell <laughs> Wait a minute. Two of our faculty members marry to each other? Yes, they confided in us yesterday. They seem to be very happy. But uh, you don't, Mr. Wellman. Of course I'm not happy. Well, they, they can't do this. It's against the law, the regulations of this college. It's, it's distinctly stinted. 
stated quite plainly, two members of a faculty family cannot be gainfully employed by... Dr. Hall, I shall demand this matter be annulled. Or something. <laughs> well, I... Uh, I think the... Or something is to be preferred to annulment, Mr. Wellman. Uh, our bylaws are well established, but matrimony is a much older institution. However, Mr. and Mrs. Gardner are valuable members of the faculty. Don't you think that in view of the circumstances, the ruling of the board should be set aside? Impossible. It's the policy of our cornerstone. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the cornerstone of the, the, the very foundations of our... This ruling was formulated, Dr. Hall, in order that... And for anyone to suggest that we throw away our rule book just to accommodate a couple of newlyweds is simply... No, 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 Dr. Hall, no. <laughs> Wellman, now don't you understand what it means to these two people? They should have thought of that before they... No! Why, 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 to defy this ruling is flying in the teeth of providence. And I... Well, I be, be, before you know it, some faculty family might have a combined income of more than... Well, maybe more than the member of the board, for example. Well, considering the present state of teachers' salaries, Mr. Wellman, it's not likely to happen in the foreseeable future. I assure you, as president of this college, I am frequently embarrassed when I check our salary list. Yeah, the head of a department makes less money per annum than a second-rate prize fighter or a, a minor league shortstop. Yes. Sometimes seems that earning is a matter of getting the L out of learning. <laughs> Nevertheless, Dr. Hall, we cannot compromise with, uh, I mean, a ruling that is basically... These people were familiar with the law, and if they chose to ignore it, I'm afraid they must take the consequence. So, so, what, what time is it? Oh, oh, my goodness, I've got a meeting of the finance committee in ten minutes, and they're in a very bearish mood, Dr. Hall. Very bearish. Well, as chairman of the board, Mr. Wellman, I'm sure you can tame the bears. Yeah, he can do better than that. He can make the whole thing unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm terrible. Yeah, that's very good, Mrs. Hall. Wait a minute. Well, what did you mean I can make things unbearable? Was that a disparaging remark? Oh, no, just animal spirits, Mr. Wellman. <laughs> oh, yes, I see. Animal spirits. Eh? Bears. <laughs> I think I've been insulted. <laughs> and I'll have to think it over. Well, well, goodbye, Mrs. Hall. Yes, I can find my own way out. Goodbye, Mr. Wellman. Well, Cody, it looks like you and Cupid have lost the first decision. Do you take the case on appeal? Well, I shall at least prepare a new brief. Legal battles are a little out of my province, darling, but, but I'll do my best as an attorney. As Dr. Johnson said of a woman's preaching... It is like a dog walking on his hind legs. It is not done well, but you are surprised to find it done at all. Dr. Hall. Oh, Dr. Hall. Oh, why, Dr. Otis? How are you? Oh, a little anxious. John and I were wondering how our case is going. Well, having failed in the initial direct attack on our chairman, I am preparing an enveloping movement. It's an elaborate maneuver in which you slip around the side, find the chink in the armor, lower your visor, raise the halberd, and let the old boy have it in the neck. Smite him hip and thyroid. <laughs> Where is his particular chink, Dr. Hall? Well, after years of experience, I have found that it is located between his flashing sword of economy and his brassy breastplate of pride in ivy. And there is a shaft speeding directly toward that point. <laughs> Yes, dear. The Lord High Executioner and Protector of the Realm awaits your presence in the living room. And Clarence? Yeah. Mm, I didn't expect such quick results. What's his mood? Well, I'm not sure, but you better get ready to talk turkey. Um, I'll match him drumstick for drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just hang around. Maybe I can pick up enough flying feathers for a new duster. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Wellman. Dr. Hall, I've been waiting here for a good 15 minutes. I mean, a bad 15 minutes. And I have no time for any explanation. Oh, I shan't ask you for any, Mr. Wellman. Uh, <laughs> well, good. Well, but perhaps you can explain this. Oh? The memo you sent me, adding $5,000 to the estimate of the faculty payroll for the next year. Ah, yes. Yes, of course. Well, since Professor Gardner and Dr. Otis are married, 
They cannot both be on our faculty next year. Regulations, you know. Your regulations, I believe, Mr. Wellman. It certainly is. Worked it out very carefully, word for word. Of course, the gardeners would both prefer to stay at Ivy, Mr. Wellman, but they're reluctantly considering employment elsewhere. So, I've made some preliminary investigations for teachers to take their place. Oh, good, good. That's fine. Uh, you will agree, I'm sure, that upholding the principle of your own regulation should be well worth the extra $5,000 it will cost for immediate replacements. D you mean to say, Darren Stan, that... Uh, are you trying to tell me that, uh, that we have to pay an extra $5,000? Well, if that's how it is, that's how it is. All right, pay the extra 5000 After all, the principle of the thing is what counts. You're absolutely right, Mr. Wellman. Thank right, you. Sure. Mm. But uh, it's too bad Ivy has to lose the prestige of publishing the two books Professor Gardner and Dr. Otis are preparing. Books? What books? Why didn't somebody tell me about this? Why am I so ignorant of these matters? <laughs> Publication of a book by an Ivy professor is, a, is very important. Oh, yes. And it would have been nice to publish them under the imprimatur of the, of the Ivy University Press. Ah, well, Ivy's losses, some other colleges gain. And I don't suppose it matters too much who publishes a work, as long as it's a contribution to learning. It most certainly does. I also understand that Bradford College is anxious to add Gardner and Otis to the basketball and track trophies they took from us last year. Never. Uh, I won't allow it. Do you hear, hear me? I, I, uh, leaving Ivy. Why, 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 why? Can you give me one good reason, Dr. Hall? Why, Mr. Wellman, you know the rule on faculty marriages. Dr. Hall. Yes, Mr. Wellman? I shall expect you to support me at the next meeting of the board when I move that we strike this regulation from the book. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know, Mr. Wellman. Let's not be too hasty now. You spent a great deal of time and thought in formulating the rules, and to discard it without due consideration would due be... Due consideration, my grandmother. <laughs> the ruling is ridiculous. After all, a man can change his mind, can he? You know the old saying, uh, foolish consistency is the, uh, uh, something or other. A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. Oh, I wouldn't say that about Mr. Wellman, dear. I think it would be better to say that circumstances alter cases. Oh, well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Hawker. Mm. However, if you think it wise to repeal the regulation, Mr. Wellman, you may count on my support. Wise, Dr. Hall? Lose two books, Ivy publications, just because of a silly bylaw? I'll call a meeting. Send out letters. Call people. Cut that bars. Lift that bell. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's a good goodbye, Dr. Hall. Goodbye, Mr. Wellman. Old man Wellman, he just keeps rolling along. <laughs> well, it seems we've just destroyed one of the foundations of this college. You know, Mr. Wellman is now completely convinced that if you hadn't been so stubborn, that rule would have been repealed long ago. I know. I am the hidden catalyst in the chemistry of Clarence Wellman. Well, there's one nice thing about being a capitalist. They always have money. <laughs> I said catalysts, my darling, not capitalists. <laughs> you know, I thought a catalyst was a cowboy. <laughs> well, as long as you think so, I'll start rounding up the gardeners and tell them the good news. Oh, do, Tony, and bring them here. I want them to know that it wasn't Cupid who did it after all, but you. Yes, Vicky, with my administrative bow and arrow, I shot Sparrow Wellman. <laughs> Well, it just goes to show, doesn't it, that everything turns out for the best if you know the right people. Oh, my darling, that, that's a very cynical attitude. Although I must say that some of my favorite characters were cynics. As, um, <laughs> as Duke Gerald of Tuscany said to Martin of Portugal, the meek shall inherit the earth, but only when the bold pass on. <laughs> for it is the strong and the determined to administer this world's affairs, mostly for gold and glory. But... Should by mere accident a trifle of good accrue to their stewardship, they become history's darlings and are hailed as lovers of mankind. This production of The Halls of Ivy was broadcast with an actual audience present in the studio.
Love.